Hello YouTube, uh, Devin here again. I'm making a video here this Saturday. Uh, it's the uh, first time my roommates got out of the house for really more than an hour in the last like two weeks when, you know, I've been home. So, so I figured I'd do a video here for you today on one of my, my favorite helmets. And uh, this is a French helmet and I, re I really like French helmets. They just hold a uh, certain je ne sais quoi, if you, if you will. Uh, some pun intended there. You don't have to laugh. It's not funny. But but um what I have in front of you here today is uh the French F1 helmet. And before we get into the actual helmet, we're going to we're going to take a look at um the cover first cuz uh the French do their helmet covers um in a way that I I really really quite enjoy. And uh they have they have two camouflages. All right. They have a they have a their woodland uh which they call CCE and then they have their desert CCE. And now there's a difference between the fabric. Uh, the woodland is kind of a, a thicker twill type fabric. I don't know if you could see the little horizontal lines. They're running this way though. Um, and this is a, a herringbone, herringbone fabric. So I don't know if you could kind of see the alternating lines. They make like a V shape. And there my camera's not really focusing so but you can kind of see the little lines in there can't you so but this is their their cover and their covers are are held on by these rubber rims which I really like and they fit over the lip of the helmet and they're very um nice in that regard it keeps uh because it acts two things it is the retention system for the helmet and you don't have any strings to deal with or anything else to like go bad on it uh these are held on by some pretty rigorous stitching as you could tell there there's like the seamless kind and then there's just one regular single row of stitching behind that so these these are they hardly ever break and uh, it also protects the rim of the helmet uh, from water because it's rubber rubber's not gonna hurt like it will steel and you know um, it's gonna keep the paint intact and it's gonna produ uh, protect the longevity of your helmet and I thought that that was a pretty pretty ingenious design it's been adopted adopted by a lot of other countries um but this is their woodland version so and that has a black rubber rim on it uh it's kind of this greenish brown on the inside kind of diarrhea colored um but all in all it's a it's a it's a good design i really i really like how the french do their their helmet covers now this helmet is the French F1, and it's actually brand new. It's never been worn by anyone ever. Uh, I've had it for, for a long, 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 long time. Um, this one was made in, I believe it was, uh, it says here on the inside. Uh, I don't know if you can see that down in there, that kind of white circle. 19, here, my finger gets out of the way. 1979, right there. Uh, but these came out in 1978, so this is this is a pretty early one. And they were made up until, like, the 90s, uh, when French uh, came out with the F2 helmet to replace this. But this helmet uh, is actually has a, some pretty funny uh, origin stories. Now, this replaced the uh, M51, which is kind of like France's version of the, M, the American M1 helmet. And France's version is really more round, whereas the American one is kind of oval-shaped, if you look at it, from... Like the inside, so if you look at it like this, the French one is more round, and the American one is more oval shaped. So, I mean, so the American one is oval shaped, and the, the French one has a more of a kind of bell shaped profile from the side, and they have a plastic liner instead of a fiber liner. Uh, but all in all, it's pretty much a copy of the M1 helmet with some, some aesthetic differences, and uh, that replaced the... M26 Adrian, and if you want to see the M26 and the M15 Adrian, feel free to go look at my uh, Adrian family of helmets video. Um, I don't have my M51 here at the moment, but I'll do a video on that here too once I get it uh, out of storage. So, but in the meantime, this is one of my one of my favorite helmets, and uh, it's a very, very, very comfortable helmet. And they took this suspension and they pretty much put it in a Pazgat shell to make the F2. Um, but this helmet. Where it gets its shape from, it's actually uh, based off of a Soviet design. Um, the SSH-40, actually. And, which everyone thought was kind of odd, but the SSH-40 actually provides 
a lot of coverage. Uh, it doesn't obstruct your hearing. Um, it's a pretty ergonomic design as far as firing stances go. So for like prone, it comes up in the back and stuff like that. It protects your nape very well. It has a slight brim on it. Um, it doesn't have a big skirt like the German helmets have, which can tend to uh, hinder your prone firing and they tend to obstruct your hearing and stuff. So, the, so they copied that design, but instead of making it so big, uh, they shrunk it down. This is very close fitting helmet. Um, it's made out of very, very good steel. It's made out of Renault steel, which is, you know, you might know of Renault, the car company, if you're from Europe. Uh, uh, Renault and uh, Peugeot initially started out as steel companies. They weren't always car companies. Uh, but these are, this is made out, most of them are made out of Renault steel, which is actually very, very, very good steel. Um, and uh, they're, they are rimmed, as you can see that on there. Um, they are... Uh, they're not pinch welded like the American ones are. They are just crimped onto the steel. And you can see the seam at the back. It was painted over so the seam is kind of hard to see. But it's right there. It's kind of a little nick in the edge. And my camera's having a shit time focusing like normal. But then it's held in place with these, these little uh, screws. So A washers and screws hold the suspension system to these nuts which are like part of the shell um, some of them are part of the shell and uh, some of them aren't because um, the paint and everything kind of fuses them for a while right to the shell but uh, these ones are probably nice enough to where you could break them off if you really wanted and it's just a dome nut and a screw and an a washer and this is probably by far one of the most comfortable liners for any helmet type out there now this is a triple bail helmet so it's got one bale here, up by like your temple, one on the other temple, and one on the back. And these are just pinch welded right to the shell. So they're not, they don't swivel. They're just pretty much steel pieces of wire that are bent and welded right to the shell. But this helmet has single weave herringbone, so you can see the V in the webbing, all right? Uh, it's nylon webbing, by the way, so it's uh, it's very weather resistant, and uh, they used uh, chamois on everything, which is this kind of felty, thin leather, uh, comes from lamb or sheep, and that's some good things, because uh, lamb and sheepskin, if you guys don't know, is actually naturally antimicrobial and naturally fire resistant. Uh, wool, uh, fun fact, wool is one of the few known fibers on earth that is naturally flame retardant and will keep you warm even when soaking wet. So it's pretty much a, a super fabric and uh, sheepskin is another example of that. It's pretty much a super fabric. It's one of the best leathers to use for stuff like this. Um, but the liner is a um, six point liner. So it's connected at six points around the shell. So one in the front, one in the back. Uh, this is actually the front, sorry. So one in the front, one in the back, and then there's two on each side, kind of one at the temple area and one kind of at the rear corner of your skull. And uh, they're padded. These foam pads are glued to the suspension, so the webbing, to give you uh, that impact resistance. And it's a very uh, squishy, kind of uh, jelly type foam. And you see them around the uh, edge here too. And there's, you can see some of the glue that overflowed. Uh, and they used a lot of stainless steel parts in this, as you can see, by the uh, kind of blued on there, too. Uh, they blackened a lot of this stuff. Uh, some of the early ones have brass. I see some of the navy ones. You'll find them with brass on it, because brass is a copper alloy, and it doesn't rust very easy, especially in the presence of salt, which is why the, the navies use a lot of brass. And you see a lot of, like, older Marine Corps stuff has a lot of brass on it. Um, this big crown pad is... Uh, has the uh, six overlapping pieces of fabric glued to it and uh, how you adjust the height is there's these loops on all the little arms of the suspension and there's six little loops on the crown pad and so there's a string right here at the back that you can adjust to adjust the height um, the sweatband is a piece of uh, chamois leather attached to a nylon a uh, piece of fabric and it's adjusted with velcro here at the back and you just kind of route the excess behind these uh, loops uh, This is very similar to uh, what you see a lot of the Canadians using uh, today Today they use um, this kind of suspension pretty much with the subtle differences 
Um, it is a very, very comfortable, very, very stable helmet. The chin strap is held on with these two snaps. And this is a very ingenious design because like, uh, like if you've seen my German M62 Stahlhelm design, if you want stability, you can put on both snaps, all right? Or if you're going into like a combat area, you can leave just one snap snapped. And what that allows you to do is if there's a blast, it's a lot easier for one snap to come off and the helmet will leave your head rather than catching all the shock. Cause this is pretty much again, an upside down bowl you're wearing on your head. It has no vent holes at the top for all that pressure to escape. So when a blast goes off underneath you, it's gonna want to pull this upwards and away from your head, but your head is connected to it. So it'll put a lot of strain on your neck and possibly kill you if the blast itself doesn't. So, so you can do just one snap if you want to uh, do that. Also, if you're uh, wearing a gas mask or something, uh, you can take this front snap and snap to the second snap and you get like an extra, extra inch of space there, which you probably are gonna have to do some adjusting anyways if you're wearing a gas mask to make that still fit but it's just it's just a fun fact if you if you manage to be able to find a way to do that um the chin strap is adjustable with slider buckles everywhere um here's the one to adjust the uh, kind of from the uh, nape to the temple suspension and the temple suspension is velcroed through slider buckles to um so this piece of velcro is how you can adjust the rate of that slider buckle and it's just extra way the slider buckle is probably enough but the french really over engineered these to last forever and these uh stayed in use from 1978 to 2008 so a long 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 time and uh you tend to find them in pretty good condition you can also find them in pretty beat up condition and they come in like uh this is the military one because it's green but there's blue versions used by the police and the police i think still use these and uh stuff like that but it's a it's a very very uh, comfortable helmet. They're very very affordable. They're around. Um, this one is brand new, never worn, and uh, it's a it's just a great overall helmet. I really like the French helmets and their designs of stuff, despite the bad reputation they get military wise. But some people seem to forget that it took pretty much every other country back in like the 1700s, other than France, joining together to beat France in a war. That's how powerful France actually can be as far as military power goes. People seem to un really underestimate them, especially in today's day and age. Um, just because of that rap that they get in World War II and World War I. So, but that'll pretty much cover this video, I think. So, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and you enjoyed this uh, helmet as much as I do. Uh, you can find these on eBay. Again, this is the French F1 helmet. So just a big capital F and the number one. Uh, I'll do a video probably sometime maybe tomorrow or later today whenever I get the time or early next week on the thing that replaced this the F2 because I have a brand new unworn French F2 as well um, till then uh, I'll leave the video here uh, hopefully you guys hopefully you guys liked it and uh, if you have any comments questions or concerns uh, feel free to drop me a line um, Please spread the word about the channel. I'm just trying to get some of this information out there. I can help you find some stuff. I can help you identify something if you have something you don't know about. Or if you have any questions, if you want to see something from a specific time period. Um, again, I'm going to reiterate, I'm probably not going to do any German World War II ones until there's really nothing else to do. Because there's so many other videos out there on them that you guys can find information on. So... But uh, I'll leave it here. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you want to see anything else, I do, I've do. i got boots, gas masks, backpacks, camouflage, tons of other stuff. Um, I was going to do the first part of this video in French but then because I'm Canadian. But then I remembered that uh, French-Canadian doesn't sound anything like French. And even French people probably couldn't really understand me because my French is horrible on top of that. So, but thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye.